Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and in this video we are going to cover something not many people cover because it is actually very complex thing and like you see you're seeing on the screen it's PAM the pluggable authentication module in the Unix and the Linux based system which deals with user authentication. So in the last video we covered UID and user switching but those operations are completely happening in the kernel space. So kernel is only aware about the user ID right. So the user authentication that is something which is happening in user space and it's mostly handled by the PAM. So we'll look into what PAM is, uh, we'll first look into some theory and then we'll go on to terminal and see it hands on. So PAM deals with user authentication and it was introduced in 1995 by Sun Microsystems. It makes use of, of something called uh, modules so they are dynamically loadable and they perform different i mean different kinds of authentication so using pam you can i mean it supports different types of authentication like say for example two factor authentication so pam also supports that apart from the normal user password based authentication and the hardware i mean those key based authentication right so apart from that pam also supports i mean various form of authentication like the two factor authentication the configuration files can be found in etc pam d directory and generally you would have the name of the service which is i mean using pam as the name of the file in this directory so we'll look into etc pam.d and see what all files we have uh, each configuration line generally has three uh, fields so first one is the function type then you have the control arguments and at the end you have the modules which is performing that particular function uh, modules sometime also take some arguments but we'll not look into that we'll just focus on these three types of uh, entities so fun function type so what a function type basically what an application is wanting pam to perform uh, say for example the auth function type is you're requesting for user authentication there's a password function type that uh, updates the user password and things like that uh, PAM configuration uh, lines are actually in a stack. I mean, I'll, this would make sense when I'll show you on the terminal what I mean. So you have multiple lines in one file and they're all stacked and they're all evaluated in sequence, right? And depending upon the control argument, so this is this is where the control arguments come in. Depending upon the control arguments, they are uh, basically evaluated. So let's look at the control arguments. So control arguments are basically of two types, simple and complex. Uh, we'll be looking into the simple one because complex one are a little, I mean, will be too much for this discussion. It will go very long. So we'll just look at the three simple types you, you will mostly see. The first one is the sufficient. So if this rule succeeds, the PAM does not uh, look for any more rules in that file. So if this rule is successful, the authentication is successful. Requisite, so if this rule fails, the authentication is successful and the PAM will not look into I mean all the other lines which are there in the file and the required one even if I mean if, the, if this rule fails the PAM will go and look into all the other rules but at the end it will eventually return unsuccessful authentication so that there's a very meager difference between requisite and required so when requisite fail the, the PAM does not look for look into other rules but when required fail, the PAM do look into the other rules, but at the end it returns uns unsuccessful authentication. So this is all the theory I wanted to cover. I mean, I wanted to cover it quickly so that we can go into terminal and see how exactly it's happening, right? So let's just go to our terminal and see that. All right, so I'm in my terminal and I am in the etc pam.d directory. So first thing, if you want to check what all modules are available on your system, you can do man hyphen K and PAM and underscore. So don't forget the underscore and it will list all the modules which are available on your system. You can see and it also tells what a particular module does. So let's say, for example, PAM underscore deny the locking out of PAM module. Right. So you can read this. Uh, let's clear the screen and First, let's look at the man page for the PAM configuration file. So let's do mam pam.conf, I think. Yes, it is. So if you go down, 
So here you, I mean, they have defined all the function types. So for the account, it basically checks if the user account is, I mean, valid or not. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's valid or not. For auth, basically checks for user authentication. Password is used for updating the password. And session, this module is associated doing things that need to be done for your user before and after they can be given service, right? So basically what is, whatever happening in the session. If you go down below, you have your control arguments defined over here. So required, requisite, sufficient, we have discussed. There are a couple more uh, optional. Success and failure of this module is only important if it is the only module in the stack associated with it. So they mostly this, the I mean, the output of this uh, control argument is ignored unless you have this uh, situation over here, if it's the only module. Include, basically these are not, uh, I would say control arguments includes in substack. They basically include uh, the configuration file of a specified argument, which is there. So we'll see what I mean when I say include, right? And if you go down again, so you also have uh, maybe syntax for the complex type of uh, control arguments. So they've shown how to define complex uh, arguments, right? So you can just read through this, right? So you have die and done definition over here. So if you read the sub stack, so it's very similar to include. It includes all the file uh, types of configuration specified by an argument and but it differs in the evaluation of done and die action. So done and die actions are defined over here. So die is equivalent to bad, equivalent to the bad with the side effect of terminating the module stack and the PAM immediately returning to the application and done is equivalent to okay, right? So you can just, I mean, I'm just going through it quickly. All right, so let's exit out of it here and let's do an ls hyphen lrt in our etc pam.t directory and let's look at some pam configuration so all these services so i told you the name of the file is basically the service which is using pam so passwd screen sshd so all these services cron d they are using pam right so let's look at any of this file so for example let's look at ss let me clear the screen first and SSHT. Let's look at SSHT. So I haven't looked in. Uh, I mean, I've never looked into SSHT PAM. All right. So you can see there are multiple lines. So these lines are stacked, right? So they go one by one and like this in order, right? So you can see it has it is performing auth multiple times. So first is required. So if even if this fails, so it's using a module called PAM se permit dot so module right so i need to check what this module does i'm not sure what this module does so we'll, we'll check well later then if i mean if this even if this uh, step would fail it would go down but eventually it will return a failure that authentication has failed then it goes to a sub stack uh, called password dot auth so if we do a cat on password password dot hyphen auth so this has some rules defined in itself so whatever what this is doing basically substack is doing it's calling all the configuration from this particular module which is password hyphen auth so you can see in this we have a required pam environment dot so fail delay so we could re we can read about these when we did a man hyphen k on our like to check what our uh, modules are available in the system. So we can check what particular module does. PAM Unix.so basically checks for uh, user authentication. That I know. And apart from that, PAM succeeds. So you can see there, I mean, they have written some complex rules, right? So which we are not discussing. So like I told you, a module can take an argument. So here you can see they have provided an argument to this module PAM fail delay.so and delay they have provided these many seconds from most probably. Similarly, PAM Unix.so, it's taking an argument null, okay, and try first pass. So, I mean, this is how the PAM file is structured and you can even create your own uh, 
PAM files and have, I mean, mostly you, you wouldn't have to create your own PAM files. You can just, uh, I mean, edit any one of these for user authentication. So, I mean, you can do a lot of things using PAM, right? So we'll discuss that in the later videos. For this video, I just wanted to show you the structure of PAM, how PAM is structured in the system and how you can basically go about uh, just doing some exploration, right? All right. So yeah, this is it for this video, guys. This is what I wanted to cover for PAM. I mean, I told you about the control arguments. I told you about the functions, function types and the modules. And I showed you some files, basically some configuration files and how they are stacked and how each line is read when uh, basically evaluating a PAM thing, thingy, I mean, whatever you call it, right? Yeah, so this is it for this video. Please do subscribe to the channel before leaving. And yeah, thank you for watching.